Hi everybody, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this New Year's Eve. My tooth is much better, but now I seem to be fighting some kind of other bug, so I'm a little bit subdued. But nonetheless, let's <clears throat> run through what's going on because uh, you know we've got we've been in sort of atmospheric turmoil for a while, and I, and I think that continues. First off, there isn't too much happening uh, tonight with the arrival of the new year here in the eastern part of the United States. It's just this a weak uh, weather system that's moving on through. There's a warm front that's going by and then a cold, weak cold front that follows. And there might be a uh, a rain or snow shower with that overnight when the new year comes in. Tomorrow is going to be a pretty mild day throughout much of the east. There's no real cold air. It's mostly no, north of the Canadian border. Uh, but we do have uh, some overrunning moisture that develops and starts to move up the coast Monday morning. And this next high kind of parks itself up into northern New England. So that's going to allow for a little low-level cold air draining southward. And if this moisture comes in tomorrow morning, either in the form of rain or some drizzle, it, it's probably going to be uh, uh, freezing in inland areas. So it will probably have some little freezing rain or freezing drizzle. It doesn't look like a big deal here. There's not a whole lot that's being generated. Much of the moisture is getting pinned back to the south as Low pressure starts to develop in the Midwest, and it looks like a pretty decent snowfall for parts of the Dakotas and through Minnesota, northern Minnesota, as a, a low goes up there. You can see there's a low here, a low here, and a low here. There, it's a very um, conv in some, uh, complex, and yet at the same time, it's kind of convoluted with all these all this energy running around. So it's just hard to get a big storm to form, so you have, you know, almost a, a, a huge warm front here and there's a, a low that's going to develop a weak low that's going to develop off the Virginia coast out of this the bottom line is that there probably will be a pretty good soaking rain uh, for the east uh, for the northeast in particular out of this on Tuesday and then it moves on through now after that is where it gets um, really confusing because models have been going all over the place with this uh, first having um, low uh, waves of low pressure coming up from the south with overrunning precip all over the place and then it wiped it out then it brought it back now it wiped it out again and the GFS is very subdued what what's happening and I'll widen out um, first off even before we go to to that explanation let me just run back so you can take a look at what the weather is much of the country is not really doing very much here so you know we'll take you through it and you can see that lo that low in the Great Lakes intensifies as it moves northeastward and up into eastern Canada into a pretty decent sized storm. There's some rain and snow that comes into with a, with a low that moves into southern Oregon and spreads snows throughout interior northern California, um, the, the uh, southeastern part of Oregon, northern Nevada, and some of that eventually winds up uh, into Colorado. Now this is where earlier this week the model was shooting out all this energy northeastward, but what's happening is all of a sudden, the model decides it wants to make it cold again. So it overwhelms uh, much of the uh, eastern part of the United States with cold air. So you, you can't really have it both ways. If you have too much cold air overwhelming the, the pattern, there's no room for anything. Everything gets suppressed to the south. And that's what the GFS is doing. And you see it takes out two waves. It, waves. it even has some frozen and freezing precipitation in the coastal Carolinas here by uh, next weekend before that low moves out and then you get more energy that comes into the west so you know it's so messy <laughs> it's, I guess that's the best way to describe it um, let me show you the upper air because this is where we've we've seen a change and and I think the big problem is you know when you have a lot of energy that's running around in the atmosphere the models just sometimes don't know which which energy to key on but let me just back it up. So here's the system for Tuesday. And now you can see all this area in blue. That's colder uh, colder air. And it covers virtually the entire United States from coast, uh, coast to coast. But it overwhelms it. And the flow, you know, there's no, there, it, it, it's basically flat. There's, there's these, you know, troughs that are out in the Pacific. Uh, you've got um, a big ridge. You know, those ridges are building. And you've got that big ridge in the Gulf of Alaska, the one that's, building over Greenland so right here you got a vortex trap but when the flow is this broad there really isn't a whole lot of room for anything to happen assuming that that's correct um, and that's the big question because embedded in all of this 
um, if you look, I mean, it's hard to see, but there's like these little, little systems here that are kind of moving along in the flow. It's hard to pick, pick them out. I may not actually even be picking them out in the right spots, but, you know, as long as that's the case and you've got these, you know, this, this weak pattern um, in, in, in the sense of um, these shortwave troughs of energy moving through, um, you got a problem. Now, <clears throat> down the road, uh, we start to see uh, the ener everything starting to rearrange itself again around the 10th of January as a, a deep system moves off the West Coast. So I I'm going to be curious to see how this all plays out, of course, as we all are. And I just want to show you the Canadian model today because the Canadian model is is different in its own way. And let's um, let me see if I can get the what, if it's out far enough. And unfortunately, I don't believe that it is. So let's see. No, uh, sadly, it's only out to 78 hours. I did see somebody, um, you know, I did see um, the Canadian apparently does try to take uh, does try to make something of that energy in the southern stream and bring it up the east coast for late next week. So we'll have to see. Yeah, I think, you know, there's still plenty of time for models to go back and forth or go in a different direction with all of this. But for the time being, we're going to just keep things the way they are and just see what happens and, and kind of follow along on this mystery. By the way, when we look at the teleconnections, a couple of changes that are worth noting. First off, uh, the Pacific North America pattern, which is off the wall negative, um, after the 10th of January, starts to trend toward neutral for the first time in a almost a month, so maybe even longer. So we'll see if that's the case. The North Atlantic oscillation reflecting blocking in the, in the Atlantic, that index is negative. So the more negative it is, the stronger the blocking. So it's got a fair amount of blocking showing up. The EPO index, which is off the wall negative, and when that's negative, it's very it's cold here. And you notice that it goes all the way down to minus 400 on the index here that it measures um, around from January 3rd and 4th. So this is the reason why suddenly we have all this cold air kind of spreading out across the United States with no real room for anything else happening. And then uh, after January 9th, it, it Go slightly positive. I have a lot of doubts in terms of, you know, anything after the seven-day period because, you know, yesterday it was negative all the way through. Um, the NAO was negative, trending to neutral. The PNA was negative all the way through. Um, PNA, by the way, the Pacific North America Index, when that's positive, that puts a big ridge of high pressure out in the west aloft, and that creates um, more opportunities for storminess in the east because if you have a big ridge in the west, you have to compensate that with a deep trough in the east. So I, I'm, I'm kind of in a state of confusion here, which I suppose is par for the course considering the kind of year we've had um, with 2016, a very strange year in so many respects, especially weather-wise, but we'll keep you posted. Download my app and subscribe to my forecast just a buck a month. Uh, I'll put the link up on here for you, and uh, of course, I'll have some posts about all of this on the website later this afternoon, meteorologistjoechaffee.com. Have a happy and safe new year. For me, I'm working tonight at WPIX-TV Channel 11 in New York, and uh, so I'll be on the air, and then I'll be on the road when everybody's uh, having uh, you know their New Year's parties, but I'm not a big New Year's guy anyway, so it's not my, it wasn't my, never really was my thing. So have a great night, and uh, we will... Uh, Post again tomorrow.